one. We want to welcome our YouTube listeners, brothers and sisters. We are live on the Bible Show Truth Hour here on POET Radio. I'm your host, Black Ice. And I'm your co-host, The Messenger. And we're dealing with tonight's lesson. Are you a Christian, Christian. Or, or are you a pagan, pagan worshiper? Oh, brothers and sisters, it's about to get deep on tonight's show. Are you a Christian or are you a pagan worshiper? A pagan worshiper, brothers and sisters. So we want you to follow this with us. It's about to get deep, but we promise you that what we read is going to be written from this book called the Bible. Now, this show tonight is designed to show the difference between the children of God who know the truth and follow Jesus and the words written in this book right here called the Bible, brothers and sisters. Right here. Again, <clears throat> this show is designed to show the difference between the children of God who know the truth and follow Jesus and the words written in this book called the Bible versus those who know the name Jesus hmm. but don't know him and practice pagan rituals. Again, you know the name Jesus. But you don't know him because you practice pagan rituals. Share this video right now, brothers and sisters. Now, the disclaimer tonight is this is going to hurt some feelings, brothers and sisters. Absolutely. And we don't intend for it to do that. But we know that truth hurts. Yes, it does. We understand that many of you may not be aware that you are a pagan worshiper. You may not be aware that you are celebrating pagan festivals or activities and you may not be aware that some of the religious leaders are pagan worshipers the religious leaders are really the ones to blame they are and responsible they are responsible let's go to the book of jeremiah the 23rd chapter again Write these scriptures down. Go get your Bible. Follow this with us, brothers and sisters, because we're going to give you proof on tonight's show. We're going to give you proof on tonight's show. Share this right now. We're going to go to the book of Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 through 4. This is a warning for the pastors that teach these pagan holidays, these pagan rituals and festivals, and incorporate them and bring them into the church. Jeremiah 23, 1 through 4. Come on, brother. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Hold on. Read that again. Woe unto the who? Woe unto the pastor uh -huh. that destroy and scatter, my, scatter the sheep of my pasture. Now they scatter the sheep of the Lord's pasture, brothers and sisters, by misinforming them. Don't you know when you tell someone that it's okay to do something that the Lord told them not to do, you're scattering them further and further and further away from the Lord? Absolutely. Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter my sheep. Go ahead. Say it, the Lord. Therefore, Thus said the Lord, God of Israel, mm -hmm. against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, mm. said the Lord. Wow. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whither I have driven them and will bring them again to their folds and they shall be fruitful and increase. And I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them. So wait a minute. I thought the pastors are already feeding the sheep. Well, the Lord said, you scattered them. You pushed them further and further away from me. I'm going to go and get the remnants of them. I'm going to go and bring them back into the fold. And then I'm going to replace you, you with pastors that I'm sending to them. Because these pastors today, I'm not saying all of them, but many of them were not sent by God, brothers and sisters. Because if they were sent by God, they would be teaching the word of God. Absolutely. Did we finish that? No. Go ahead. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, said the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, right now, 
We are lacking because we've been taught something in the church that doesn't line up to the Bible. Now, if I taught you from birth, brothers and sisters, that two plus two equals five. You've been learning that since the age of two and three years old. And now you're getting older and older and <clears throat> you get to be in your 20, 20, uh, 20s and late 20s. And now someone that has come to you and told you that two plus two don't equal five. Two plus two equals four. You're going to look at them like, man, you must be crazy. What are you talking about? My mama told me this. My grandmama, grandmama told, told me, me this. this. My pastor <laughs> told me this. Two plus two is five. And then we go to the calculator and we press two. And then the plus sign, and then the other two, and then the equal sign, and it comes up to four. All of a sudden, you're going to be like, man, you mean to tell me I live to be in my late 20s, and I've been either lied not to true. or told something that's not the truth that I believed for all this time? And you that's see. the way Christians are in the church, brothers and sisters. They've been told something for so long that they have believed something that they can't even find evidence of in this book called the Bible. So what we do on this show, brothers and sisters, is open up this book called the Bible so that we can take you to this book called the Bible so that you can read with us the words of this book called the Bible. And then you have no more dispute. And if from that point you have dispute, it's not with Brother Messenger and I. The dispute is with the word of God, brothers and sisters. But I told my mama two weeks ago, I said, Mama, if it, if, if it comes down to a choice of believing something that you're telling me versus believing what I can read in this book called the Bible. I told my mama, I said, I love you, Mama, but I'm going to go with God before I go with you. Absolutely. And my mama looked at me. She said, well, son, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. And that's what I'm doing, brothers and sisters. So now let's go, brothers and sisters. Again, we read in the Bible about the pastors and the preachers who teach pagan doctrines, such as Christmas being the birth of Christ. We can't read that in this book. <laughs> we covered that. What about Easter Sunday service? We can't read Easter Sunday service in this book. What about New Year's Day being on December the 31st? I mean, December the 1st, January the 1st. Or New Year's Eve, Eve service, brothers and sisters, on December the 31st. How many people was in church on December the 31st? That wasn't New Year's Eve, brothers and sisters. That was the eve of the 11th month of the year, brothers and sisters. We're going to go into that. What about the churches who teach Ash Wednesday? Who teach Lent? Churches that bear the image of a cross, images of a man who's supposed to be Jesus. And what about Sunday Sabbath service, brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. mm, mm, mm. We're going to show you where it came from and we're going to show you who instituted it, brothers and sisters. And when we show you where it came from and who instituted it, you're going to find out that it has nothing to do with God, according to this book called the Bible. Now, let's go and define what a Christian is, brothers and sisters. And let me just say this. The word Christian is only mentioned three times in the Bible. Again, the word Christian is only mentioned three times in the Bible. Jesus never called his followers Christians. Let's read what the definition of a Christian is as defined by those who looked at the followers of Jesus and actually just gave them a name. Go ahead. A Christian is a person who follows or adheres to Christianity, an Abrahamic monotheistic religion based on the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. Okay, so we know that a Christian is one who follows um, the teachings of Jesus, um, an Abraham monotheistic religion, belief in one God, based on the lives and the teachings of Jesus Christ. Okay, brothers and sisters. Now, since we know that Jesus never called his followers Christians, brothers and sisters, let's see what Jesus did call his followers. Let's go to the book of John, verses 6, 
verse chapter 6 verses 66 and 67 john chapter 6 verses 66 through 67 again you can't find christian nowhere in the old testament and you can't find it in the book of matthew mark luke and john you only find the name christian in the writings of paul so Christian was the name that the enemies of Jesus called his followers, but it's not what Jesus himself called his followers. Let's read what Jesus himself called those who followed them or him. John chapter 6, verse 66 through 67. Let's go. From that time, many of his disciples. What? Many of his disciples. Jesus called his followers disciples. Many of his disciples went back. And walk no more with him. So they followed him. They walked with him. He looked at those who supported him. And he said, you are my disciples. But many of his disciples left. And who remained, brothers and sisters? I mean, uh, brother messenger. Who remained? Then said Jesus unto the twelve. So he had more than twelve disciples, brothers and sisters. But after so long, many of the disciples that followed him that said that they believed on him, brothers and sisters, they walked away and only 12 remained. Read that again. Then said Jesus unto the 12, will ye also go away? So now we read that Jesus called his followers disciples. disciples. Now let's go to the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 14 through 17. Romans, the eighth chapter, Verses 14 through 17. Now, let's see what Paul in the book of Romans wrote, brothers and sisters, about those who, who were followers of Jesus. Go ahead, my brother. Romans 8, 14 through 17. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So if you are led by the Spirit of God, you are a son of God. What We including you too, sisters. Go ahead, read the next one. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage uh -huh. again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So when you are afraid, brothers and sisters, that spirit of fear don't come from God. That spirit of fear comes from Satan. Go ahead. Continue to verse 17. Oh, well, I got to go to 16. Uh, okay, 16. The spirit itself bear it witness with our spirit uh, that we are children of God. So let's stop right there, messenger, because we got a lot of scriptures to go about. We can go to the next one now. So brothers and sisters, again, we talking about we are brothers and sisters, sons of God and children of God uh, and children of God, those who are followers of Yeshua, those who are followers of the man whom we now know as Jesus the Christ, brothers and sisters. But we're going to deal with Christmas now. Hmm. How many of your churches out there celebrated Christmas? That's what we need to know. Because again, the title is, are you a follower of Christ or are you a pagan worshiper, brothers and sisters? Now, we just came off the biggest pagan holiday, the Christmas celebration. Okay? What does Santa have to do with Jesus? <laughs> Nothing. What does a Christmas tree have to do with Chris, um, Jesus? What does the what does Christmas have to do with his birth, brothers and sisters? Mm. What did the scriptures say about celebrating the winter solstice festival? Well, let's read the origin of Christmas um, in the Wikipedia. Did we pull it up? I don't I don't think we pulled that up. The origin of Christmas in the Wikipedia. Uh, let's see if we have that. Brothers and sisters, we will come back to that. Now, let's go ahead and analyze in the book of Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, as to what it says about what now is known as the Christmas celebration, because one of the cornerstones of Christmas is decorations. Absolutely. Right. Yes. And the other thing that you do during Christmas, brothers and sisters, is put a tree inside of your home and decorate it. Well, the balls on the tree represents planets. The lights on your tree represents the stars or the constellations in the sky, brothers and sisters. So, again, what does a tree, what does decorating a tree, what does 
Putting all those things on your tree have to do with Jesus. Let's read what Jesus said in the Old Testament, brothers and sisters, when he was Lord in the flesh about celebrating a pagan holiday in which you decorate trees and you put all those shiny things on it, which we now know that day in modern times to be called Christmas. Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 5. Hear ye the word <clears throat> which the Lord speaketh unto the old... And unto you, O house of Israel. What did he say? Thus said the Lord. Learn. Learn not the way of the heathen. Now, before <clears throat> it was called pagan, brothers and sisters, pagans were considered to be heathens in the Bible. The word pagan is not mentioned one time in the Bible, but we know before the term pagan came to existence, it was heathen. Those who celebrated multiple gods. Learn not the way. Read that one more time. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Now, why would it mention be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, brothers and sisters? Because the signs of heaven is what you can see in the sky. And what did we see yesterday? A big old super moon, as they called it, brothers and sisters. And they gazed at it and they marveled at it, the creation. What did they gaze at last year? The eclipse. Oh, this ain't been around in 75 plus years, 95 years. Let's go outside and look at it. The Lord said, don't be amazed at my creation. Be amazed at the creator who created the creation. But we know that the Gentiles are amazed at those things. You see it all on their news channels. You see all of them going outside, looking up at the sky, stargazing, brothers and sisters. They are dismayed at those things. Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Go ahead. For the heathen are dismayed at them. What do they do, the messenger? For the custom of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Uh-huh. The work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. Stop right there. They go and get a tree. They cut it out of the forest, right? Yes. Let's stop right there. We're going to take a detour. Now, according to Wikipedia, about Christmas, it says, many popular customs, the Cust tree is one of the customs. Cust many popular customs associated with Christmas develop independently of the commemoration of Jesus' birth. birth. So outside of the birth of Jesus, these customs were already in existence. We're in the book of Jeremiah. Long before Jesus came through Mary, they were doing these customs, brothers and sisters, which let you know that these things didn't start with the birth of Jesus. They started thousands of years before Jesus was born. It says many popular customs associated with Christmas developed independently of the commemoration of Jesus' birth. With certain elements having origins in pre-Christian festivals that were celebrated around the winter solstice by pagan populations. Are you a Christian or are you a pagan worshiper, brothers and sisters? If you're doing this activity, then you are a pagan worshiper and you may not even know it. But your pastor should, because this is the same book that your pastor has. And he should be reading to you, Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, what the Lord say, don't do again. Go ahead, messenger, learn not. He says, learn not the way of the heathen uh -huh. and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Okay. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Mm -hmm. For the custom of the people are vain. For one cutteth the tree out of the forest. The work of the hands mm -hmm. of the workmen with an axe. Okay. They deck it with silver deck, and gold. Deck is short for decorate. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You remember the Christmas carol? Deck the halls with vows of holly. Decorate the halls, brothers and sisters. What do they do with this tree? They deck it what? They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moves not. 
They are upright as the palm tree, uh -huh. but speak not. Why would it be mentioning that a tree is speaking, brothers and sisters? Because the tree was an idol that pagans worshipped. They dressed it with jewelry, brothers and sisters, that was representative of what they saw in the sky. Because remember, this is a winter solstice celebration. The winter solstice is every year on December the 21st, the darkest day of the year. So that's why they put shiny things on the tree, which represent lights, brothers and sisters. It's called a festival of lights. That's why during December the 25th, there's so many lights on so many homes because this was the darkest day of the year. That's why they wanted lights. And so they made idols out of trees to put lights on them, brothers and sisters, to take the place of the sun. There's a whole nother lesson on this about the sun god Horus, mm -hmm. who, according to Egyptology, was killed by the darkness of by the god of darkness, which was called Set. That's why when the sun goes down, they call it the sun setting. set, brothers and sisters, setting of the sun after the god of darkness set. And it was said that Set killed the god of the sun, Horus, on December the 21st. And he was put in a grave on December the 22nd, where he stayed for three days and three nights. December the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And on December the 25th, during the daytime, he rose from the grave. And this was all because the sun had started to ascend back up in the sky. And the light of the days started to increase. It was all a winter solstice celebration. Now, we're going to go ahead and keep on moving. Read verse 8, my brother, so we can keep moving. But they are altogether brutish and foolish. What are they talking about? What's altogether brutish and foolish? The Th customs. These customs, these celebrations, what they doing in the church. I see a lot of churches with Christmas trees on the same stage as the podium. That the preacher is standing at. And while he's looking at you. And criticizing you. He has been in direct violation. Of Jeremiah the 10th chapter. Continue. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. It's a doctrine of vanities. Now that's Christmas. So now we know that. If you celebrate Christmas. You are a pagan worshiper. According to the Bible. It don't matter why you do it, brothers and sisters. Oh, this is just for the children. I want to do something for them. If I take away Christmas from my children, oh, the, they going to look at me as, as a real bad parent. Brother Messenger, please give your personal testimony. This was the first year that this man told his family that he was, that yeah. they were, tell him, Brother Messenger. It, it, I'm going to tell you, it's not easy. For 40 years, I've celebrated Christmas as long as I can remember, but- once I came into the knowledge of the truth, I talked to my wife and I talked to my children and I told them we would no longer celebrate Christmas. What we would do is we would create our own family tradition, but it would not be associated with the birth of Jesus Christ. We would not be saying that it's Christmas or anything of that nature. Um, and it wasn't easy. Believe me, I had a lot of questions <coughs> from my children, uh, you know, but. Again, we have to do what's right. And as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's right, brothers and sisters. So again, are you a Christian or a pagan, pagan worshiper? worshiper? Now, let's deal with Easter. Here's another day. This day right here is commemorated by the sex goddess Esther or Istarte, brothers and sisters. So, is celebrating the goddess of fertility about Jesus. That's why she is celebrated during springtime. She is the goddess of spring. In Greece and in Rome, they celebrated this time of the year of Easter with sex orgies. They would go and have the women hide in a game of hide and seek. And then they would go and chase and see if they can find the woman. Well, don't we hide the Easter egg? Yeah. And we say go and find the Easter egg. And you go Easter egg hunting, brothers and sisters. <laughs> yes. When the man impregnates the woman, 
The sperm fertilizes the what? The egg. The egg, brothers and sisters. Easter egg honey. This is a sexual ritual custom, brothers and sisters. The egg represents new life. The rabbit represents fertility. And it is celebrated this time of the year of spring because it is the time of the year when leaves grow back on the trees. Grass comes back out of the ground. Animals that are in hibernation comes out of hibernation. It is the start of all things new. New life, brothers and sisters. Well, let's go to the book of Exodus. Now, again, what does an egg and a rabbit have to do with Jesus? Let's go to the Lord's Prayer and see what it says about celebrating the goddess of Easter or any other god for that matter. Exodus 20, 3 through 5. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Uh huh. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Or that is in the earth beneath. Okay. Or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Mm -hmm. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Okay. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Mm. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. And that keep my what? Commandments. And the commandment is, thou shalt have no other God besides me. So the goddess of Easter got to go, brothers and sisters. The goddess of Easter got to go. Now, why is Easter to us black people or Israelites, brothers and sisters in this country, why did we fall in love with it? Because they tricked us. They, they put it so close to the Passover that we thought it was one and the same. We thought that Passover and Easter was connected with one another. But that's how they do all of their religious pagan holidays, brothers and sisters. They try to connect man's holidays to God's holy, holy days. Passover and Easter has nothing to do with one another, brothers and sisters. Passover is one of God's feast days and Easter is one of the pagan worshippers days, brothers and sisters. Wow. Mm -hmm. We moving on this show, brothers and sisters. Let's go to New Year's Day. Uh -oh. Now. Uh oh. <laughs> everybody told me over the past few days, well, happy New Year's. Please. I'd rather say happy 2018. A year consists of how many seasons, character? Four. Four seasons, right? Yeah. Spring, summer, uh -huh. fall, fall, and, and winter, winter, right? Yes. Why is it that the world we live in today changed it to God saying you got four seasons in a year to now we got five seasons in a year? <laughs> we end the year in the, in, in, in the season of what? Winter. In the season of winter. And we begin yeah. the year in the season of what? <laughs> According to man. So we got winter, spring, <laughs> summer, summer, fall, winter. winter. I thought we had four seasons in a year. <laughs> so see, brothers and sisters, when it makes sense, it makes sense when you hear truth. And when you compare the truth to the lie, the lie don't sound so good no more, brothers and sisters. So let's analyze this. Now, you and I are intelligent people. But we are lazy when it comes to doing research. We just believe anything that the, that the Gentiles wrote. Remember when they said that the world was flat? They did say that once upon a time too. And we found out that the world or the earth was round. Mm -hmm. So we believe anything that the Gentiles write in the history books. Uh, uh, we, we believe the pastors... You know, they open up the doors to the church, teaching their flock that it's the new year. You got to come to my church on December the 31st, New Year's Eve. Throw your money in the collection plate for me to tell you the lie and not the truth. So you paying your tithes and you ain't even getting the truth, brothers and sisters. 
At least if you was getting the truth, I would feel better about you paying your tithes. Share this video right now, y'all. I'm telling y'all, y'all getting this word today. So let's go to the Gregorian calendar, Brother Messenger. Let's go to the Gregorian calendar. And then we're going to go to the Julian calendar. I want you to read that. We See, we do research on this show, brothers and sisters. We do research on this show. So let's go to, well, read this one first. Go ahead. Let's go to the Julian calendar, the Julius Caesar calendar, the July, Julius Caesar, because Jews do lie. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> go ahead. The Julian calendar. Go ahead, my brother. The Julian <clears throat> calendar proposed by Julius Caesar in 46 BC. So the Julian calendar was proposed by who? Julius Caesar. Okay, so Julius Caesar ain't God. But let's see if he can do as good of a job that God does. Go ahead, my brother. Was a reform of the Roman calendar. Uh-huh. It took effect on 1st January, January the 1st, 45 BC, uh -huh. by edit. It was the predominant calendar in the Roman world, most of Europe and European settlements in the Americas and elsewhere, until it was refined and gradually replaced by the Gregorian calendar. Now, who the hell is Greg, brothers and sisters? We got Julius Caesar, but who is Gregory? The Gregorian calendar. Go ahead. Let's see who, Greg, who, who the Gregorian calendar was named after. Go ahead. Promulgated in 1582 by Pope Gregory the eighth. So wait a minute. This comes from the Catholic Church too. Mm -hmm. Just like Easter was sanctioned as a religious holiday by the Roman Catholic Roman Church, Church too. Just like Easter was instituted by the Roman Catholic Church too. You're going to find a lot of these things are instituted by the Roman Catholic Church. And although you call yourself Baptist, you call yourself Methodist, you call yourself Kajic, Church of God in Christ. You call yourself Pentecostal, brothers and sisters, but what you are are a Roman Catholic if you're practicing these things that the Roman Catholics instituted and they are based on pagan rituals. So now, since Gregorian calendar was mentioned, let's go and read about Pope Gregory and the Gregorian calendar. Go ahead, my brother. It was a refinement to the Julian calendar. We just read that. Involving an approximate 2% correction in the length of the calendar year. 0.002%. 0 0.002%. Mm -hmm. Correction in the length of the calendar year. So Julian's calendar was a different length than Greg's calendar. calendar. Go ahead, Pope Greg. Let's see what he did. The motivation for the reform was to stop the drift of the calendar with respect to the equinoxes and solstice, particularly the northern vernal equinox, mm -hmm. which helped set the date for Easter. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. So changing the, the calendar, calendar in the year was a setup for Easter, brothers and sisters. The celebration of the goddess of fertility. So you changed the year from the time that God had it because you wanted to set it up to celebrate this false pagan goddess, Easter. Yeah. Man, go ahead, my brother. Tradition to the Gregorian calendar will restore the holiday to the time of the year in which it was celebrated when introduced by the early church. So the early church instituted Easter. The ones that you paying your tithes to is keeping Easter. It's keeping Christmas. It's keeping a false new year, brothers and sisters. Let me ask you a question, messenger. Hmm. You stop at a stop sign. It has eight sides. It's in the shape of a what? An octagon. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So now there's a sea animal that has eight tentacles. We call that a? Octopus. Now each of those words begins with the first three letters. Oct. O. C. T. We got a month also that begins with O-C-T. That month is October. The etymology or root of any word that begins with O-C-T means eight. It was named that because it was actually the eighth month of the year, brothers and sisters. Yeah. We go two months after October, we got December. 
Mm. Well, the root of the word December, D-E-C, represents 10. A decathlon has 10 races. A decade is 10, ten years, years, brothers and sisters. You round up to the nearest 10th tenth tenth. when you are doing decimal, decimal points, points, brothers and sisters. So if October is the eighth month of the year, December, December is the tenth, tenth month, month of the, of the year, year, that would make January the eleventh month of the year. You just spent the eve of the eleventh month in church, brothers and sisters. Not New Year's Day. But we're going to get it. We're going to find out what New Year's is. We're going to teach you that on the show also, brothers and sisters. And we're going to teach you that right now. Let's go back to the Bible. See, we got to go out of the Bible when... You're being taught things out of the Bible. We got to let you know where it comes from. So let's go back to the Bible and find out when New Year's Day is 2018, brothers and sisters. Let's find out when God's New Year's Day is in 2018. So you better write this down because all you all that went to church on December the 31st, we want to see you in church New Year's Eve to God's New Year's Day. Leviticus 23, 4 and 5. Go ahead. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Now, who instituted this? The Lord. Not Julius Caesar, not Pope Gregory. The Lord instituted this, brothers and sisters. So you're going to walk with the Lord or you're going to walk with Julius Caesar and Pope Gregory. I think I want to walk with the, the Lord. Lord. So now we're going to explain to you when God's new year start every year. You need to have this knowledge for yourself. Leviticus 23, we just read four. Now let's read five. Here's the key to determining when the new year is. Leviticus 23 and five. In the 14th day. Wait, what day? The 14th. The 14th day, write that down, of which month? Of the first month. So you got a day, you got a month, which is the first month. What time of the day? At evening. Uh huh. Is is the Lord's Passover? So the Lord's Passover is on the fourteenth day of the first <clears throat> month. Yes. Okay, brothers and sisters. So now, since we know that the Passover is on the fourteenth day of the first month, we got to go back to the encyclopedia, and we want you to go to your Google search engine, and we want you to type in the word Passover. Passover. Now, when does this say, <clears throat> brother messenger? That the Passover will be this year. Passover 2018 will begin in the evening of Friday, March 30th. Now, brothers and sisters, we need to show this to you. Okay. Passover begins in the evening right here, brothers and sisters. Friday evening, March 30th. But there's even some knowledge to this, brothers and sisters. Now, Messenger and Sister Key Israel, real quick, I want you to take a detour. Let's go to Genesis 1 and 5. Hold that place. Genesis 1 and 5. I want to show you something real quick. But remember, Passover is in the first month. <clears throat> so we got the month of March. Passover is in the month of March this year. It's on the 14th day of the first month. So we got March and we got the 14th day, but we're going to calculate that for you. But I want to deal with this evening part. Genesis 1 and 5. And God called the light day. Uh -huh. And the darkness he called night. This is when time started because before God separated the light from darkness, brothers and sisters, man could not tell time. So this is why this starts with day one. Go ahead. And the what? And the evening. Stop right there. 